Hello and welcome back. Okay, a couple of videos ago, we redesigned the LCD circuit to support both reading and writing so we could run it at high speed by utilizing the busy bit. And at the moment, on the main CPU core, I'm waiting for PCB and components for the ALU result. And at that point, the whole of the core CPU will be PCBs. And I'll just be left with this one little breadboard on the side. And so I think what I'd like to do is design a PCB up for this just so uh, when that does get here, we can have our first execution without any breadboards involved before we add a big pile more. So let's go look at the circuit design for that. Okay, now where we left this before, the only thing we're really lacking is some capacitors. I never like unused gates, but we've actually been pretty uh, efficient on this one. Saved me a lot of time finding a module with the uh, correct dimensions and pins on. Okay, let's see if we can root it. So these capacitors are just there in case I feel the need to clean up the edge. Okay, let's get some copper fills in there and we're done. I'm going to skip the stencil this time because there's only a few components on there. Okay, let's take a look. This is quite a simple circuit, but it's going to be quite nice once we've got it all done up. Okay, so those screws line up. I think I will use a socket in here though. We need some standoffs. Okay, now I didn't go for a stencil on this because there was only a small number of components. And I also want to kind of not get out of the habit of hand soldering entirely.
Okay, so I'm just going to use a bit of isopropyl alcohol to clean the PCB down. And we just get a bit of solder on one of the pads. And what I'm aiming to do here is just slide the chip into the spot where it needs to be, possibly slightly too far. Now I just line up some solder over the pins and flow it on. If you don't recognize the 7400 as four NAND gates, welcome to the channel. Okay, so you can see I've missed one of the pins there, but there was just enough solder on the tip. It's actually the wrong place for that capacitor. Right, there's a very good chance I've ruined that cap now, so I'm not going to risk it. Okay, so this pad that I missoldered soldered to, I'm going to see if I can clean off some of the solder. That's perfect. I do miss the way everything kind of gets tugged into place with the solder paste and hot air. Very difficult to get the components perfectly straight otherwise. So I've got the 16-way and the two 8-ways on here. I think maybe if I stick some headers in, that was a great idea, which I didn't execute very well. Okay, it should get a lot easier once I've got the first pins done. Now I've seen I squared C and SPI daughter boards for these modules that just uh, tiny little things that sit behind the LCD board, but I did want to do this in such a way that it would sit comfortably on the desk and allow us to see the circuitry. And I do like to write the lines next to the pins. Okay, so that fits in there quite nicely, but this isn't supported very well. So let's have a think what we can do about that. Now I'm interested in 3D printing a bracket to hold the LCD in place on top of the PCB. Now I don't have any screws that will go all the way through, I've just been digging around in my hardware drawer, but um, stopping it from uh, slumping down and just being held by the pins in one corner will be good. And rather than measuring all the bits meticulously, I did find this data sheet, so that's going to be handy. Right, so the holes on the PCB are three millimeters diameter. So I'm entering radius here. Let's 
give it a little bit of space. So the holes are 93 millimeters apart. 55 vertically. So if the total size is 98, vertically it's 60. Okay, on the sides, this can't be quite as tall. So there's some brackets that would bump into it. Now the pin header is going to be taking up a chunk of this. Okay, so pin to pin is 38.1. So we may as well round this up a chunk as well. Because the left hand side of this pin space will be this 10 mil minus half of 2.54. Let's actually give it 2 mil on that side and 2 mil on that side. So it's 8 mil in and then 42.1. This gives a little something for the holes in the top to match into. Right, so I've got a screw that will just about make a clearance through there and fit onto a little nut that will sit on top. I think that 88, I need to move it. In theory, this shape should 3D print without needing any support material. I'm just worried I'm not creating something particularly strong here. None of these corners are great. There's enough room for my screw to fit into this gap. I can't go any sharper angle on this if I'm going to avoid support material. Okay, I think that'll be a workable bracket. Okay, this looks pretty good. It is just there to provide a standoff. That mates brilliantly. Yeah, I like that. These bits forms nicely without needing any support. Okay, so I didn't quite leave enough room, but that does work. Okay, I'm going to get the main build out and give this a test. Okay, let's see if we can get this wired in. So these connections should all be in the same order. And the clock's at the bottom. Okay, I had to tweak the contrast a bit, but that works. What we've got here is a nice little module I can move around without needing to worry about the fragility of a breadboard. I think actually once the ALU is complete on PCB, I may do some work over here for a while because access to the address bus is gonna be needed for some of the future stages. So that'll make an interesting change. And this has helped us get that far. Okay, well, 
I'm hoping this is a fairly modest sized video. Some of them have got quite long recently, but I hope you found it interesting. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll hopefully see you again soon. Goodbye.